Hi, everybody. I am Roxy Shi. I'm a Taiwanese American writer and director calling in from Los Angeles, California, where it's bright, beautiful, and sunny. And um, I am wearing glasses. I have beautiful, luscious purple hair that goes all the way down to my breastbone area. And I am also wearing a very colorful cheetah print jacket today. And in my background, I have fairy lights. Um, and I also have two artificial jellyfish in my artificial aquarium that I got off Amazon for $100. Very happy to be here. Thank you, VC, for having me. And on to my special guest, or I'm just as a special guest, but the other person in this conversation who happens to be one of my best friends in the world. Who are you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was quite the intro. Okay, well, I'm... Sheldon Chow. I am a Cantonese American filmmaker. Um, I am calling in from Brooklyn, New York. Outside my window is dark, it's nighttime, and it's also covered in snow. We had a crazy snowstorm two days ago. Um, and I am sitting in front of my um, bookshelf and a DVD shelf. Remember DVDs, Roxy? Those are extinct, but I Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. I know that you show and, off a um, lot about that. You, it's very clear that Sheldon wants to show <laughs> off his Criterion collection. That's something he's quite proud okay, of. Okay, okay, cool, 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 <laughs> cool. Let me finish. Um, okay, so, so that's... And then, <laughs> okay. Okay, let me focus. Um, and I am a I have short black hair. Um, I am wearing headphones and my dark blue t-shirt, solid color. That's all I wear, right, Roxy? Just solid t-shirts. <laughs> it's okay to uh, look at your Chanel look. I'm into that. Right. And um, yeah, and that, that's very much. Oh, and I have a pimple scar on my left side next to my nose from all the mask wearing. Oh, I also have a pimple on my left side. I think we're twins. Oh, no, we're not twins. Okay, great. Okay. But, uh, you know, not only is Sheldon, like, an incredible, like, we're going to be talking about, like, um, his slam dance short, Flying Eggs, in this conversation, but also Sheldon is a revered, well, he's a revered cinematographer. You shot, like, a lot of my stuff. Princess is also, his dog is complaining right now. Yeah, yeah, she just barked. But uh, anyways, I just want to say that Sheldon's an all-around very talented, amazing person and artist, but please don't tell him I said that. Okay, so we're gonna be asking each other all these questions that Isil is dropping on the side so we could get to know each other a little bit more. You're not supposed to reveal that. The, okay, never mind. Go for okay, it. <laughs> but Sheldon, for everybody that's watching, when did you want, when did you know that you wanted to be a filmmaker? I know this answer, but why don't you tell the people listening? I don't think you know that? this answer, but um, <laughs> I, it was definitely in high school because before that I was playing a ton of video games and I thought I wanted to become a video game developer or something like that you know I didn't know what that was but and it was about mid high school is when I two influences my uncle Tom mm. Casalasso and my drama teacher Mr. Posada they both combined and you know in school and out of school to kind of introduce me to films that changed the way I saw films because like you mentioned earlier, Criterion Collection and stuff like that, basically films that that enlighten me in ways that the normal Hollywood blockbusters, you know, before that I would watch action films. My favorite films, you know, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Still is one of my favorite films, but you know, that's all I watch, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jackie Chan movies. Yeah. Um, you know how it is. Um, yeah, remember like after... you did that short, that short in Hong Kong where you like had a camcorder and like, sorry, I'm not supposed to reveal that. No, just kidding. That didn't happen. I mean, no, you could, you could reveal that, but it's just like. No, but I think it's amazing. Like we, I should we... take that stuff off YouTube. I think. <laughs> but it's just so much fun. You know, like I think because we're such a big fan of the martial arts genre that it's like you even go and create your own when you have the opportunity to. Right. Oh man, it's, it's terrible. It's so bad. It's but not bad. It's not, it's so you gotta bad. honor your past self. Sorry, um, keep going. Oh yes, yes, that was my past self. And that's the stuff that even when I first started filmmaking which is you know in high school and in early college I was making that stuff martial arts film mm. stuff that you were just talking about because I didn't know anything else that's the stuff I grew up on so I'm like you know what that's what I know so I'm gonna make something like I took taekwondo as a kid me too um, are we twins what belt did you get to black belt <laughs> in elementary school whatever that means black belt you know I can't do anything now it's like I can't wow. even my you know my splits are like like this that's like the most I could you know <laughs> stretch my legs but anyway so so yes it was high school when I wanted to become a filmmaker I think and that's my study film in college and that led to you know going to grad school for film uh -huh, uh -huh, but uh -huh. but for you uh, you've bought a ton of films and you're like one of the most hard-working and uh -huh. and brilliant people I know 
and you know and you're also my best friend so i have to say yeah. that just kidding just kidding yeah. I mean it. so <laughs> what, what's your favorite part of the filmmaking <laughs> of the filmmaking process like i know you do it all so you, you've done producing directing so what do you like you like writing casting editing I know you don't like editing, but. No, I, writing freaks me out. Um, I honestly, directing is, I'm not just saying this because I know that for many people, they think that directing is like the dream, but I honestly, it's where I flourish the most. I deeply love collaborating. Um, I really love the preparation process. I love pre-production because that's when we're creating the puzzle pieces in theory, then in production, we're actually materializing um, everything that we thought about into these puzzle pieces. And then post-production is just about putting all these puzzle pieces together in the best way that we can. And um, I think really recently, um, I think production's stressful um, and where I really flourish is in post, not of course being hands-on, but I think working with the people in post-production, mm. really seeing the project come together and uh, working with music is definitely my favorite thing because I'm such a music-based person. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, cr I really love that one-on-one -on -one process with the editor and the composer. I think this is where I truly find the film. Um, but in terms of like sound design and um, I would say color, color I usually give to my DP. I usually just let them take it because they already know what direction I want the project to go and uh, in what direction I want it to go. So I let them usually make that choice. And then um, I would have to say, yeah, like music scoring and editing is really where I feel the safest, I would say. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Shelby, what were you like as a kid? Oh man. Wait, before I answer that, I want to take it back in your answer because mm. it's I like that what you said because you're such a collaborative person. Mm -hmm. And everybody who I talk to who who's worked with you on set or in post, they love you. Like you're the you're you're just a ball of energy and you know you you work so well with people, you include people, so everyone loves you. So I like that you you included a shout out to all the people you work with in post, sound, music, editing, you know. It's good because this is the uh, most nice thing. Like this is the most <laughs> most nicest. Out, nicest thing you've ever said to me in person. Like I'm just I, like, well, I'm just beginning this conversation. I wonder how much flattery I'm gonna get for you. I'm gonna bottle yeah, it up a little I jar. Gotta, I'm gonna listen gotta temper to temper your ego, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> your ego, you know. Anyway, what did you, what did you ask me? You said something about oh, me what as were a you kid. like as a kid before I met you on that one day that I met you on our first day of meeting? What were oh, you like gosh. before then? As a kid, I mean, yeah. uh, like pre high school, well, during, actually, um, I never knew what to do with my hair. I had like this wax slick back hair, you know, for elementary and middle school. It was terrible. Acne, <laughs> you know, I picky, picky eater. I only like certain foods. Uh, uh -huh. My brother used to beat me up. Um, I think even as a, as a baby, he would come to me and look at my eyes and hey what are these things that move and it would like poke my eyes so maybe oh, you know it, it, it kind of, yeah but no we have a we have a good relationship but yeah I think I, I think I was a little awkward a little, little scrawny you play a lot of sports basketball probably wasn't as good as I thought I was <laughs> no like um, when I met you it was all about basketball you know yeah it was all right, about like being right. active doing sports and like everything you made when I first met you it had so much movement and energy and like there was not chaos, I guess, but like, I think as we get older, we become more grounded in the way that we create things. But I remembered like when we were in college, like all of your stuff was, was it had a lot of energy. It always, you cut everything like a trailer. There was always so much momentum building somewhere. Like you were about to crack through a new cycle or something. Um, right. And now the stuff you make is like, well, we'll talk about the stuff you make, but there's <laughs> definitely so much more layers to everything that, that you do, you know? Right. Well, I mean, that's good. I, I was awkward, I think. I didn't know how to dress at all. <laughs> Do you so think we would have been friends? Would, would we have been friends in elementary school? Probably not. I probably both. Probably not. Out of you're too cool. Exactly. You're too cool. You are too cool. <laughs> for me. Yeah. I, was, I was the athletic one, maybe. At least I oh, thought yeah. I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. But speaking of school, what was your, in high school, what was your favorite subject? Yo, I got to be honest. Yo. I am not a good Asian student. Like, I don't know how you were like in high school, but I was like a straight 3.43 student. Not GPA. too bad, right? Oh my God, really? You don't think that's bad? Oh, um, well, anyways, got rejected by every every university. Wait, where, where, where is this high school? Uh, Diamond Bar, it was Diamond Bar. Diamond Bar, oh, I yeah. thought I knew you. 
the heck? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we didn't meet until college, stupid. Um, <laughs> like, weren't you born like the Netherlands or something? You know, I you're, was. You were. So, yes, yes, but I was born there. I didn't stay there all throughout high school. Right. I just think my English is so good, and then I have a Californian accent now. Shall we? Yeah, so California, like so what? much, like exactly. Um, I don't think I, my favorite subject orchestra. <laughs> Is that lame? <laughs> Orchestra. Oh, you, you do play the violin. I've seen you playing those in the mood for love themes, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I still quarantine and everything. I still flex that, you know what I mean? Um, I always loved going. Orchestra. I love making music. I think music was like the greatest thing when we were able to play Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, we were able to nice. play um, any scores. Like, I think that was the best Schindler's List. Like when um, when I later went to UCI and I joined the symphony, like that was like a whole nother level of <clears throat> of talent and um mastery and you know people that were actually getting their degrees and i was just there for fun so i was uh, you know in yeah, high school yeah. i was like in the first section and then when i got to uci symphony i was in the back of the second section <laughs> so yeah. like um <clears throat> I, I my skill level definitely wasn't there but i Wait, had your, your high school play shouldn't lose list um, we did it in college. I lied. That was, that was, <laughs> we did do, we did do Pirates of the Caribbean nice. in high school. That was super, super fun. Okay. So, um, I've been living for this question because I'm curious how you're going to answer it. Ooh, look, it's like a little clam shell. Do you like, uh -huh. yeah, fun. We should do that for a screen, a screen grab later. ECL should do this for a screen grab. Um, okay. So how did we first meet? Great. I, I'm so glad you asked me and I get to answer this question because this is no, when no, the no. truth comes out. No, 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 no. Um, I... no, no, no. So no. here, hear me out, hear me out. And it's my turn. Okay. So so we, we met at UC Irvine. Uh, True. We were, well, we, I think we, we, we had class, what, 2009? I think it was 2009 or 2008, 2009, 2010, one of those. But anyway, so you, <laughs> I'm just laughing, thinking about it. So I always thought, I always thought you were like the, this loud person. This, who's this loud, obnoxious person in class? Who, You're not wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just never, never wanted to sit next to you. Like I, I didn't want to sit close to you at all, even in lecture, in discussion. Like discussion, you know, it's like only what, 15 people. You are yeah, so wrong. I, I'm not sitting next to Roxy. Um, <laughs> But that's how we met. We just met, you know, by by being in class, making films, and Roxy thought I was cool because I like eventually I bought my own camera, the Canon 5D, and then she was like, "Oh, hey, help me out because you're cool, not because no. you're, not because I like you." <laughs> you know what? I just have to say that how we first met, from my experience, even though this isn't a question for me, mm. I'm gonna answer it because basically Sheldon just wouldn't stop sitting next to me in certain so classes. So not true. So not true. <laughs> and I'm just like, what is it with this dude? that always wants to sit next to me in class. And then I'm just like, <laughs> what's up, what's his thing? And then I realized that he makes pretty okay films and that he's better than most of the people in our class. So I think that we should be friends. And then we became really good friends. Right. And then we got to know each other. Yeah, for and the record, for the, for the record though, you sat next to me. No, no, you no, sat. you sat next to me, Tim Koo. In both classes, in Fatima's class and in Brian Jackson's class. That's yeah. not true. You always, you, I would, you just so magnetized anyway. So um, Asiel wants us to move on because obviously both of us can't remember how we truly met, which is an issue. Um, right. but, Anyway, okay. so, yes. so, uh, so we met each other in college. Yes, okay. But after that, after that, but you know, before I moved to New York, we both joined, we applied for the AWC program, DC's mm -hmm. AWC, armed with a fellowship, armed with a camera fellowship. <laughs> and, and it's cool that we both got in the same year, what, 2011, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, so, I don't think we would have gotten this close if it wasn't for armed with yeah, cameras. Yeah. I, I owe a lot to that, actually, but we'll get into that in a bit. But mm -hmm. what are your favorite memories? Any favorite memories stick out? You know what, I, I just remembered there was such a huge camaraderie with our class. Like I felt, you know, Aaron Lee was also in our class, you know, mm -hmm. um, Jefferson was in our class and mm -hmm. we all had such a love for what it is that we're doing. We had so much hope and like we'd go to Little Tokyo to eat afterwards sometimes. Like it was really that fellowship aspect and Anne um, was such an amazing mentor to us. I mean, I still talk to her today. And like, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's so great. awesome. And I just remembered that everything that I learned and everything that I took from about Armed with the Camera, about community still resonates today. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would care so much, honestly, if it wasn't for this fellowship that first sparked, you know, that seed for me, because oh, otherwise- 
We worked oh, together yes. too for the first time. Okay, there. okay. You obviously want me to talk about that. So then, no, no, no. Um, no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so Sheldon, uh, <laughs> Sheldon, no, no, Sheldon no, no. wants Not to make a lot of <laughs> but but oh, honestly, gosh. it was it was just like a more more opportunities for us to collaborate because I think like um, Sheldon shot my AWC film, you know, Playtime, and he later shot obviously a lot of other work as we could both continue to grow in this industry. Um, but the foundation for it was like really our friendship, Shell. Like I think we learned to mm -hmm. trust each other. You obviously recognize my voice. Um, you saw me grow these past couple of years, and like you and I are telepathic. Like I could not, I could not say anything on set and you'll know exactly what it is that I'm thinking. And so I think this, this rooted us in that, in our friendship and our artistic connection. And also you helping me like grow, you know, um, as a filmmaker, because even before NYU, but because you went to NYU after AWC, mm -hmm. it was just like, we both sort of had a voice. Right. And I think this what? just helped us nurture it. But anyways, flipping this question on no, to well, you. Well, how, how did it feel like to premiere your film in, at DGA? And how many people was in the audience? It was a lot of people, hundreds. <laughs> I remembered that day. Did you remember that day? Did you remember how it felt? Like Very clearly, yes. It was, um, it was, it was, I never thought, you know, I never thought it would be, I'm going to cry. Never thought it would be possible, you know, because it's like, um, I remembered my pitch for AWC was so abstract. It was like fucking weird. It was like Tarantino, it had Perfect. finished in it. You know, I didn't know what I was saying, but I was very inspired by Maya Darren. I was very inspired by very esoteric, you know, themes and experimental, um, I, yeah, experimental filmmaking. I don't think that a lot of people will be able to grasp what it is that I'm saying, but AWC took me in as eccentric as I was. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to be able to show playtime, which was very disturbing in its essence, Mm -hmm. right to a whole audience like that I think really showed the diversity of what you know our community was willing to allow us to showcase and then look where it took me I ended up becoming mostly a genre filmmaker where I like to push and test boundaries and like you know see how far I can go um, in those spaces so I think that's something that I'm truly grateful for because not only was it that I felt visible for the first time when in college, you and I were not the popular film kids. We just sort of did our own thing at UCI. Mm -hmm. And then we like, mm -hmm. you know, hung out with each other maybe our fourth year when it was sort of ending. But yeah, I yeah. think what AWC allowed me to see in myself was that maybe I don't have it yet. Maybe I haven't finessed it yet, but it was getting there. and. I had nurtured, I, I have a nurturing community and I had support. Okay, I'm talking enough. I wanna know more about you. Uh, same question to you, fave memories besides working with me, cause obviously I am <laughs> so amazing. Um, and, and also like take me through, cause, cause your AWC piece was very fucking personal and right. it made you confront yourself. So tell us a little yeah, bit about yeah. that. Well, yeah, I echo you in terms of AWC, the camaraderie we had, all the people that you know, we're together in that room, the 10 of us, I think 10 of us. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a great program. And Sarah, shout out to Sarah. She just had a film. She produced a film in Sundance, right? I was a simple Yeah, she's Chris, freaking Chris Yogi. killing yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a great group. Um, but I, I was going to say at AWC and VC, because of that program, I made my documentary, a little five-minute documentary on my dad. And I, so this is what, 2011, I interviewed my dad, and this is the first time where he told me his story of coming to the U.S., how he had a whole other family. And I learned right on camera that I was um, number 10, you know, in terms of his, in terms of his children. I was, he had eight other, I have eight other half brothers and sisters that I've never even met at that point. Um, so that was, you know, incredible. And wow. then it's, it's even, it's even more precious now when I think about it, because my dad passed away in 2015 from cancer. And, you know, I was in New York at the time, so I wasn't there to, I wasn't there to say bye. I wasn't, I didn't spend too much time with him the last few years. So when I look back at the footage that I shot for the film, the film was five minutes, but I shot like four or five hours of footage. Um, it's, it's just, you know, I get emotional every time I watch it. And my favorite thing about the premiere was, because um, this was a documentary about my dad. So he was sitting next to me at the premiere and, First, I'm like just taking it in. Wow, this is the first time we have, you know, so many people are watching our film. It's, a, it's definitely a, a special feeling. But to share that with my dad, 
you know, who, who's seeing himself tell his story who, that he's never told anyone before on camera. That was like very, very memorable. And I'm always gonna cherish that. And I'm just so grateful for AWC because I made that film and now it's, it's you know, it's my memory and my dad. I remember there was a lot of controversy within your family on you making this film, but I think what I yeah. find so courageous about you was you putting in, you know, your effort and energy and your courageousness and actually making it happen because the truth has to come out. Like how many people in the generations older than us can't find their voice or can't find that courage to actually tell their story, you know, in the midst of so many people you know, feeling like we, mm -hmm. we have to save face and not be able to do it. So yeah, yeah. I remember that. It, uh, it's very, um, in Mandarin, it was a right? right? It's just like, mm -hmm. it really resonated, you know, and it stays with you. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was, it was so beautiful. It was good too, because I, I had to really dig deep and ask him all these questions in Cantonese and my Cantonese wasn't as good, you know, mm -hmm. but, but bridging into this next question for you is, do you, yeah, 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 she, yeah, yeah hungry. I know, she's just like, uh, yeah. I have to throw the ball at her sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's Roxy's dog. I know. <laughs> I mean, she likes to interrupt. Like, every time I'm very active, like, on, on a Zoom call or a meeting, she's like, I also want to participate, peasant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so, for you, do you bring any of your Taiwanese heritage to your work? Um, I think only if it calls for it. I'm very lucky that now I mostly am for hire. So I get hired a lot. I just did a show with Facebook Watch and I'm repped at Abrams and you know I get pretty consistent work making commercial content or at least like series and, and all of that stuff. Um, but if I, I think the best thing I've ever made is the visit and that was just me in, in its own you know form. And I remembered when I first pooped out the script in three hours because I was feeling frustrated with a feature film that I was working on. I immediately sent it to Sheldon and I remembered Sheldon you were just like this is the most mature piece you've ever written just because like I feel like you're somebody who has um really seen me grow and like um you've seen me you know maybe not cave to other things but but also cave to other things or having to accommodate or make myself small or you know um fit into different spaces in order to continue a sustainable career path you've seen mm -hmm. it all and I wanted to take back my voice with the visit. And there was nobody else I trusted more than to have you shoot it. And it was very Taiwanese. You know, we went back to Taiwan to shoot it. We shot it, we shot it in Shuangxi. Um, and then Sheldon got to have a lot of like street food, <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we, Gua Bao. <laughs> we, we lived in Banqiao for a week. And so we, yeah. we hung out there and then um, he was able to prep with me during that time. And being able to make that with you is still one of the best memories that I have because you're such a trusted friend of mine and like Sheldon's Mandarin got really freaking good over the course of those couple of weeks. It's Your Mandarin, down. I know it exponentially <laughs> improved like so much like when we were together. And I was so impressed because we got like a bilingual oh, AD. Oh man, but no, you guys but all, like Taiwanese really? people speak fast, you know, it's fast. Yeah. yeah. I just have to like really focus. Even you, your Taiwanese, I mean, your, your Mandarin was really good. Yeah. It's I mean, really I, I, I would, I hope that my Mandarin is good because I can't speak Cantonese like you do. Like sometimes you and Bonnie would speak Cantonese. Like when we go have dinner some and something and I'm like, I really wish <laughs> I could even be like how you are with Mandarin a little bit with Cantonese yeah. too. So I could also be a part of the conversation. Um, so, you know, I, I think I inject my Taiwanese heritage when it calls so, and also when I have room to allow representation in the commercial work that I do now. And now I think producers are definitely allowing more space for that. And I think it's also because I have more clout now. So um, it's interesting. They are more willing to listen and make changes when you have more of a voice. So mm -hmm. to you, Shell, like how do you inject like being can of Cantonese descent into your work, if ever, does it apply? Right, well, I guess, from my from a cinematography standpoint, as a as a cinematographer, a lot of my references are, of course, you know, Cantonese work, Wong Kar Wai or any Hong Kong, you know, stuff like that. Um, but in terms of me as a filmmaker, as a director, writer, um, I, it hasn't informed my work so far because, as you as I was telling you earlier, I, I had to get over the hump of making these action films, these you know, yeah. these early student films are all 
martial arts film, even though none of us knew how to do martial arts. But um, so, so I had to get over that hump. And I think by shooting so many films and features recently, um, I think I'm ready to do that now. Like I, I, I tapped into my Cantonese heritage with To Light, the AWC film with my dad. I think finally now I'm ready to, to explore that again in the, you know, the fictional and the narrative world. And so I'm actually working on two separate ideas that explore, um, you know, Cantonese and Chinese history. Mm. And one is my family and one's um, a historical. Well, you know, it's always been our dream to one day manifest being able to make a Wu Xiaopian together, right? That's true. That's true. Like, yeah. I think to so, be able to make like a amazing. hero, oh my God, I think I would freaking die. Um, Bridget Lin films, you know, all of that was just mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. inspirational mm -hmm. for me back in the day. Oh, I get to ask a right. freebie question for Sheldon. Okay, Sheldon. What? Okay, I have a question for you. So what has been inspiring you late, recently in terms of like, work or like what people what, what type of work has been really calling out to you what have you been seeing and watching that's been shifting the way or the framework that you see the world around you especially in our times big right. question sorry i think i think it's definitely work that's personal you know something that resonates with me on a personal level on an emotional level uh you know the first half of the 2010s when i was at nyu or whatever it is when i was learning to become a filmmaker it's i would say yes to everything i would shoot everything i would um you know write anything that looks cool or like i want to play with this gear now it's not about that at all i don't care what camera we shoot on this doesn't matter you know it's like i want stories that 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 speak to me and i think after 2015 when my dad passed not to always bring up you know my dad but after he passed it was a it was a a big deal for me because he always supported me in filmmaking which is rare i think right for asian parents um he always supported me he came to my screenings he, he never once told me like or asked me is this something you want to do as a career um and so after he passed i wanted to just take his inspiration keep that fire going so now it's it's making stories that matter to me and especially in these times now if it's if it's socially relevant you know to this world to this society i think it's even better for me at least you know what's kind of crazy is um you reference your dad passing i mean i don't think it's you repeating it so much but that was definitely a time when things shifted for you as an artist i remember you went to nigeria to shoot the nigerian prince and you telling me during that time that that change like you want to make work that sort of honors him. You know what I mean? Like it challenge you challenging yourself as a cinematographer in developing your style and language and how right. you want to free yourself into your work. Like, I think we all have to go through a loss in order to evolve into that next mm -hmm. level of artistry. So- Yeah, yeah. And it's challenging myself to, to it's like, I'm a cinematographer who tells stories. You know? I'm not a cinematographer to make things look pretty. I mean, of 100%. course, that's part of our job, but you know, that's, at least that's what motivates me moving forward. And, and I just want to share a very small story about Sheldon. So it's like, uh, he went to China to direct, not direct, to shoot this like $1.5 million movie. And he was there for like mm -hmm. a couple months. I don't know, whatever. And Probably then less. like we came back, remember, and we shot this short film and then there was like no budget in it and I was helping produce it. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and then um, there was no money. There was literally no money. And then Shell was like, yeah, so for this, I was thinking we could get like a movie or we could get like these lights. And I'm like, Shell, there's literally no money. And then you said, okay, well, can I get a gaffer? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, you also have to pull your own focus, which is like absurd. Like any producer telling a DP like that they have to do this is like crazy ass. And then. <laughs> And then Sheldon at one point was like, well, what can I have? And I'm like, you can have batteries. <laughs> and then Sheldon was like, okay, you know? And then he's like, and I'll take a student to like light this one light for me. And it was beautiful. It was like, you know, it pushed you and you just use what's around you. You're so synergetic and intuitive. Like, I wish more people could learn from that. Right. That it's not it's about fun, the right? jingle jangle. Yeah. Teamwork, teamwork. Everyone comes together. It's like, okay, if I can't have this fancy stuff, well, what do I have? Let's make it work. And you too, you're so good at that, you know, at, as a producer, delegating and making sure everyone's happy with whatever limited means they, you know, they have to work with. But coming but you, out micro budget. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so you produced that film. You've you've also been producing a ton of things and you've been directing a ton of things, a lot of stuff. I, mm -hmm. I it's hard for me to keep track. It's <laughs> amazing though. But Tell us, tell us more about, tell me about your recent projects, you know, what have you been working on and where can we watch it? 
Um, recently, I've been working. Uh, so uh, during 2020, I, I would say that's recent because that was like the pandemic year. Um, I went to Utah and I shot um, a series called Mira Mira for Crypt TV and Facebook Watch. Uh, I think we just released episode four on Facebook Watch. It's a very fun sort of like monster series for a YA audience. Um, it's my biggest budget project I ever worked on. It was so much fun. Um, yes. It was extremely difficult. Uh, probably the ch most challenging shoot I've ever been on. We were shooting in like sub-zero exterior nights, all night shoots, all month um, with COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it was it was tough. Like some of our key crew members got it. We had to shut down production. It was wow. a very tough experience. Um, it was gnarly. It had special effects. It had, mo it had stunts. It had monster effects. It had you know, it basically had everything, fire, everything. So uh, it was a really big uh, learning curve for me and I definitely grew a lot from it. And then after that, I came back to LA, shot a feature a week after that, um, a, dra a drama uh, that's also coming out this year. And then I start a new feature next week uh, with a cast that is just phenomenal. Dang, next so week? Next what are you doing week? talking to me? <laughs> Well, to be prepping. I know I just I just ended like a really long production meeting on zoom right before I jumped on this so um, it's exciting and then um, and then I'm going to Toronto for a new show um, in mid March through the end of April so things are pretty freaking crazy nice. but um, most importantly nice. what this conversation is all about leading to the dramatic third act of our dialogue um, oh, Sheldon we have some very fucking oh, exciting gosh. news your film that's playing at slam dance Roxy's a good hype person I'm just telling you like, I, I am she, your... she's a lot to handle but, but it's 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 nice if it's you know directed to you positively it's like okay cool I'll no i will corner, always yeah. be Sheldon. so keep it up person. okay 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 <laughs> i'll feel your ego now but um flying eggs like i know that you've made this actually quite a while back and i loved it yeah. so why now flying eggs tell us what it's about flying eggs i yeah i, I shot this uh while i was still at nyu it wasn't an nyu project but you know I, I was able to use all the gear and all the resources which is great um mm -hmm. But it's it's a simple film. It was shot here in Brooklyn in like 2014, 15, a while ago. And basically it's about a, a teenage boy who um, interrupts a man on his run, a morning run by throwing eggs out the window. That's the premise. He's throwing eggs out the window. The guy gets hit. And then what happens then? It, it, it does get pretty dark. There's a lot of twists and everything. I don't want to, you know, spoil it in case, you know, someone actually wants to watch it. But it is it is premiering at Slam Dance. Well, I guess re premiering because yeah. it it is available online on YouTube, Amaletto channel, Vimeo, staff pick, staff pick, and everything. But Slam Dance found it because they actually just started a new program. It's called Unstoppable. It's a whole new program just for people, um, for actors and filmmakers with disabilities or films that have, you know, disability in, displayed in the film. Which is my case because my teenage boy in my film is a guy with um. His name is Chris Lopes, and he's he was 17 at the time we shot it, and he had Down syndrome, and he's the he's the, the one of the like the warmest experiences I've ever had working with an actor is with him because he was just such a joy. But I, I would definitely want to work with him in the in the future again. But so Slam Dance started this new category for this, and it's great, you know, inclusivity to just get these films out there and to get exposure. Um, so that's how we found the film. Wait, and so like basically like, so th that's amazing because they found you. It's not like you submitted because yeah, yeah. you were already sort of like, oh, it's done. It's out. Right. Like, it had like a second life on it had a second Vimeo life. and then all of a sudden now it's like slammed down. It's okay, resurrected. Cool. And also I just want to say like, please go watch this movie because I think what's amazing about, um, you know, flying eggs is the fact that it's short form, but there's so many layers to it. Like you first discover the first reveal and you're like, oh, right. And then you discover right. there's another layer to it, like even deeper into the film. And I think that nuanced to filmmaking for you to discover while you were at NYU is so incredible. And just a really quick question, cause I don't even know this, like what inspired that? Was it because you met Chris Lopes? Like, was he the one who inspired this? Like, how did that come right. about? No, well, my writer slash producer slash lead actor, Antonio Garcia Jr., he's, he's the one who actually came up with the story. And the basis of that story is actually something that's ex extremely personal to him. Mm. And it was, it was something where he actually revealed uh, something where he's, he, you know, he's never told this 
the true um, inspiration behind the film until we had a slam dance uh, talk a couple like a week ago. And he said it for the first time. I, I didn't even know that was the inspiration for the film. So it was something basically that a tra traumatic event that happened to him in the past. So he brought that to the script and then he worked with me and we really just, you know, did drafts over and over again, just really made it to what it is. So I have to credit him for the for the idea and um, and for working with Chris. Chris, a uh, casting director found Chris. Um, so it was all in the script though. So I helped him shape it, but I can't take credit for the idea at all. Ah, okay. That's Kudos neat. to Antonio though. He, he, he really, you know, like what I was telling you earlier, like personal stories, right? That's yeah. what speaks to me. It's, 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 it's the best films, I think. Yeah, no, it really totally is. That's amazing. Yeah. But okay, well, change of change of uh, topic. So Roxy, huh. you have those little flashing lights back there. I bet you like, I bet you have a mic and you karaoke to that setting. It looks like a karaoke <laughs> bar. How do totally. you know? <laughs> so, so I'm just looking at that. I just like, I want to hear you sing something. But okay, what's your favorite go-to karaoke song? Um, this is very easy. I have two. So one is uh, Gaga. No. No, actually, oh, and you should you should know this though, Sheldon. It's it um, it's uh, Roxy from Chicago. Oh, oh, cool. That's I mean, that's a boring answer. Roxy's favorite song is Roxy. I mean, I know I'm like super full of myself. And then the second one is My Sharona. Nice. Yeah, nice. because I like to create a I like to start a party. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know you like singing French songs too. I also do like singing French songs. Yes, I like to believe that in my past life, I was a big black bear, um, you know, in the underground ballroom scenario, but also deeply romantic and would sing La Vie en Rose or sing anything Edith Piaf like by the Sen or something. With your nice, sexy, raspy voice. Thank right? you. Yes. And then also with a, with nice, bottle, <laughs> a nice bottle of wine and like crying all the time. Like that was definitely my past life. Um, okay. So I know the answer to this. <laughs> I feel like I know you very well, but, but it surprised me if you've changed. Uh, would you rather go karaoke, go out dancing or go to sleep? <laughs> Roxy, answer that for me. You don't ever like going out. <laughs> you like being at home. Except like, to watch movies. I like watching movies. I like to movies. watch movies. Like, that's literally the only thing. Like, anytime Sheldon, like, so um, I, I know I'm not supposed to reveal this, but Sheldon's actually moving back to Los Angeles. And I'm very excited because, like, I get to spend every day with you. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Why not? <laughs> oh, gosh. Why? We got a quarantine, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we gonna watch movies together. Um, um, maybe our hangouts maybe. are always going to go watch movies together. So, um, yes, yes, that would be what I'm yes. looking forward to when you come back here. But yes, your answer is correct. I from those three, what karaoke, dancing, sleep. I I definitely don't <laughs> dance at all, at all. Ever. Don't like, I don't move. <laughs> um, so sleep. I don't even sleep that much because I'm always like working. I don't even get yeah, that much sleep. It's like sleep... five, six hours. It's not good. No, when we were um, in Taiwan, you only slept four hours a night and I would sleep 10. <laughs> yeah, that's because you were working me. Yeah, I was like shot listing. And then I had Roxy in here. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to go out to find some shalomba. <laughs> yeah, you would have yeah. a whole day by yourself and you come back and I'm still sleeping. <laughs> good times, oh. good times. Yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, moving on from karaoke. So you, you've created a ton of things, not just films. I know you have a podcast, Two Horny Goats. Two Horny Goats. talk shows, you have features, you have music videos and everything. And also, by the way, Two Horny Goats is your, your, your colleague in that, Priscilla, a good yes! friend of ours. Yes! She doesn't get this one-on-one -on -one video interview, right? DC, so, <laughs> I actually so, told her man, she was very jealous. I told her this morning. She I think I should jealous. take over her, her role. I think <gasps> I should be your Two Horny Goats, uh, you know, co- podcast host I, I think actually you know I know I, I'm actually, offended today, you guys didn't ask me right you guys <laughs> you guys planned this without me we're like what's up with that just because I'm in New York but we're all virtual I'm here you know I love this is actually Isil and I planned this to be a trial run for you to be on two horny goats so uh, okay this okay, is actually cool. nothing for VC okay, cool. this is actually okay. I want to talk about my 30s you know okay <laughs> um, I want to talk about Mulan okay yeah <laughs> Okay, okay, go. We'll save that for another. We'll so, save that so what, what, okay, what, what is your tip? You do all this stuff. What's your tip to staying so organized and inspired and busy? Um, honestly, it just comes down to the people around you. 
you know, like I can't do this on my own. Rome wasn't built in a day and it also wasn't built by one person. I'm somebody who, um, you know, like Sheldon really encouraged me to make the visit, you know, and I think he's still encouraging me to, you know, do more of my own personal stories. And I think without that, I don't think I'll ever take action if it's just my own motivation, like it's just too hard. So I think when you work laterally with the people around you who are sort of at the same level that you are, but you are both committed towards something and you both get excited. Like, I think I get really excited about certain things. And my gift is that I'm able to really pinpoint what it is and expand upon that. So um, I think, and also because I'm a Capricorn, we are doers, we're able to put ourselves to work and actually make it come in, into the 3D. And um, you know that's my producing background as well. So it excites me to be able to spark something learn how to like like light the candle without burning it all the way to a crisp too fast and uh, finding a way to sustain it. So for me, it's all about nurturing community and growing and growing with the people that are in my life and will always be in my life like you, you know, like we will continue to watch each other mm -hmm. grow as we get older and be there for one another. And there's seriously nothing more beautiful than that. And all of these things like talk shows, movies, whatever, they're all just like, it's all just a certain, it's just something you leave behind, you know? And it, it's, uh, you may be embarrassed about those Kung Fu shorts that you shot in Hong Kong, but that was still a part of you and a part of your journey. Right. So um, at least that's what I think I'll be leaving behind because life's too short. So yeah, yeah. that's what I think good about answer. that. Really good answer. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, what inspires your visual storytelling as a cinematographer besides me? <laughs> <laughs> Roxy inspires my life. Everything. <laughs> um, I mean, I can easily say, you know, my couple of my favorite films, I always drop them, but I don't, I don't think that's what really inspires me. It's really the director, you know, the storyteller, the writer, director, because honestly, um, you know, the last few features I've shot or have been places that I've never been for, India, Nigeria, Senegal, China, mm. and I shot with you in Taiwan, you know, I shoot a lot with my friend Chris in Mexico, and it's the visual storytelling comes from these locations this comes from the, the script comes from the dialogue that i don't you know even if it's something that's completely foreign to me it's it's always challenging and fun and extremely motivating for me to dive into these you know cultures dive into this world soak up as much as i can absorb mm -hmm. it like if I, if I have time to even read books about the culture i will do that before the film you know it's just ways to like Get myself excited for for and that's gonna, always going to inform the visuals it's it's you know i never like to come into a film and tell you like hey roxy i like this film this film this film you know this film this film and i think we should make a film like that that's what because i'm inspired by that I'm like no i don't i don't like that i don't like doing yeah, that it feels like you like to soak in what's around you like you're very much mm -hmm. an artist that is that absorbs their environment and absorbs energy you know, and you yeah. become the vessel. Like, you know how actors are the vessel, but like you as a cinematographer is also the vessel for the story as well. Yeah, right. But I mean, you know, working with you in Taiwan, it was it was doing that, you know, we, we, ha I had to, we both had to adapt our first time shooting in Taiwan for the visit. Um, but I want to segue this to my my question, my freebie question to you. Because oh, being, in, being in Taiwan, it was, I spent some time with your mom and dad I love your mom and dad. They're, they're yeah, great. They, they love took you care too. Of me better than they took care of you. <laughs> yeah, they love you so much. <laughs> yeah, they, they fed me. And, oh, it was, they're great. You got to stay well, at I'm our house thinking, this one. Yeah. And, and your mom seems to be so supportive of, probably your mom and dad seem so supportive of you as a filmmaker. Probably not at first, right? Because at first, like, Roxy, what are you doing? Yeah. What are, you, are you making this? But now I, I feel like they're, they're very, you know, on Facebook, I see your mom post your premieres, photos, and everything. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. So my question is if you were to be able to, make something for them a film or a documentary or you know feature short whatever it is you know what, have you ever thought of doing that for them or like you know is there a project that you feel you want to make to for your parents to dedicate to them or to make them proud or you know anything like that so my cousin Shi Tanjie recently released his movie Big Little Women uh, it's now on Netflix starting today oh, Joseph Joseph, Joseph Shu, and uh, you know he did the Lobster Kid, which won uh, the Golden Reel Award at LA Asian a couple of years back, and uh, he made a short called Gu Wei, which was a short version of this mm. feature. 
And, um, you know, it got nominated for six Golden Horse Awards, won one Golden Horse Award. And it was a very personal story regarding our grandmother and um, the death of my grandfather and how she deals with his current lover in the aftermath of his death. So it's a movie that's sort of triggered by grief, but also the remnants of what's left behind and how a family deals with it when life itself was so complicated before. And when I thought of my journey as a filmmaker, I never thought it was for me. I thought it was always about encapsulating unique stories that I haven't heard and being able to find the connective tissue in our human experience. Cause I never, this was never about mm. me. Like if I ever make a vanity piece, I think the, as far as I'll go is the visit. And now mm -hmm. it's like, I have companies wanting me to expand that into a feature. And it's like, sort of like beating a dead horse. Cause mm -hmm film like if I ever were to do something like that is therapy for myself but it's not something that I necessarily want to share with the world quite yet mm -hmm. um so I never thought about doing anything for my parents necessarily because I think they never thought I would get this far <laughs> I say that in the nicest way possible but I am a form of pride for them and um I'm very also sort of I'm hesitant because family things are so private sometimes and mm. there are things that you should share things that you shouldn't share but mm -hmm. it but finding the certain truth about something I don't think I have that maturity quite yet or mm -hmm. be or any I'm not anywhere near ready to confront mm -hmm. that aspect of myself I think when something changes you know right. and you know what I mean in life right. then maybe right. I will feel sparked to do that but as of right now my focus is still on building Mm -hmm. um and uh and i think one day that time will come but it surely isn't now i feel like what you're doing already is is making like they're so proud of you right i know so it's like as you continue doing it maybe, like that is you know that's doing it they're so happy you know they're, they're I so know. they're really yeah, really great. proud yeah yeah it's, it's like it's amazing. like i go back to taiwan they're like oh you're like a hollywood alien you know they're like <laughs> well, my daughter's yeah. a hollywood director and that's um and then everyone's like oh my god like anything that they could brag about like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i i think for me to make give them uh, like i think in chinese culture or in asian culture anywhere and i recently interviewed my father on two horny goats he was like i would mm -hmm. give everything oh, nice. Yeah, he's like, I would give every ounce of my being to make my family proud. And that sort of hasn't gone away as it yeah. passes down to our generation too. Like that doesn't right. go away. Like It's just amazing that you're able to do all these things as an artist, as a filmmaker, as an Asian American filmmaker. It's not easy, you know, and to do that and make your parents proud and the they're bragging about you. I don't know. I just find that pretty incredible and so for so do you Sheldon like that goes both yeah. ways for both of us you know I think that we should both feel proud of how far we've come and like you know us taking this journey together and not giving up like that really says a lot and uh going off of that though <laughs> we've had the opportunity to grow together so much and how would you describe <laughs> our energy and our flow oh gosh it's a lot of Roxy just like you know like ah, shout out, ah, ah. and I'm just like uh, okay uh, okay cool and I'll go off you know as That's a director he's like she'll be, she'll be, she'll be, he'll be like Sean I want the shot oh wouldn't it be cool if you do a steady cam and she'll like go 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 and I'm just like okay right, cool let's do it that's not how it is <laughs> okay okay you you That's answer this. you you you, you answer this no no, no okay no, but, you, no. You're, you forgot. Like, usually it's like, Sheldon, I feel. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> you're mixing me up with other directors. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Together. <laughs> but I would, I would say, I think our energy and flow is pretty, um, well, and I'm, I think it is infectious, right? Because other people on set will watch the way we interact, which is yeah. very casual, very personable, very, like, snappy. In a, in a fun good way but we we always understand what, what we, like if i don't if i know you didn't like a take uh, I, like I, i'll know it like, yeah. even though like you'll be like ah or like you like, okay cool we got it and i'll be like mm. i know you always call me out think, on I it i don't think roxy i don't think roxy's <laughs> right okay yeah, you know um but i think our work and our energy and everything is, is very i mean it's like this right even if we're on set <laughs> but but even, also beyond the way we work together i think sheldon what adds to our personal relationship and our working relationship is that you and I have the same values. Right. Like That's how true. we treat crew members, you know. That's true. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, okay. 
yeah it's, it's like you you are we we believe in the family aspect we believe in mm -hmm. empowering other people and creating a space a good vibe i think mm -hmm. that's something that is unique to me in my relationship with you as a cinematographer because other dps i work with yeah they're great very fucking talented you know but beyond that professional layer like you and i believe in community right right and we're all humans right yeah you're the director of the dp and there's like you know people who are under us but it's like you know we're all it's a family right this is the film family and everything so i like the the way you treat people i like that because it makes yeah. me also want to treat people on set like that and i think that we should make another film together soon yeah what's up with that um yeah. excuse me i keep asking you're like um excuse me i'm like booked <laughs> until 2025 so <laughs> that's not not uh, true maybe i'll squeeze you in but only for like a two-day shoot roxy <laughs> Um, so I'm so still crossing true. my fingers for the Wu Xia Pian, but okay. So um, yeah, what is yeah. one of your favorite films and why? For the people in the back. <clears throat> oh my gosh. One of my favorite films is, there's so many. It's, I know. That's a tough, see, I should have, I should have prepped it to this answer, but uh, I mean, I think I'm going to single out a film that, um, that Terrence Malick's Tree of Life. Uh -huh. It's a strange, very strange film, you know. I remember when I first watched it, I was very, I was like, oh, what is this? Because I was a big Malik fan leading up to that film, and it, there was so much hype, so I watched it, I'm like, oh, this is just a slideshow of images, like, what is this? No. But I noticed as I grew as a filmmaker, as a person, as a human, um, that film just changed for me. Now it's, I've seen it, you know, 10 times. And now it's, it's one of my favorites because of the humanity in that film. I remember sitting in AWC, that's when it came out because 2011, it came out and we were in AWC and, and I was kind of trashing the film. And then Sarah Kim, one of our, she was like, how could you not like that film? It's, there's so much beauty in, in the, and she, she was wise because I didn't see it then, but now, you know, it really speaks to me. It's almost before any major project I have, I'm just going to watch that film. So I have, mm -hmm. I watched it with our friend Priscilla, your fellow two horny. Your, yeah. No, I didn't watch it with her. Your fellow horny go. But I remember yeah. watching it at the same time around the same time as her, and then we would just debate, and like she hated it, I hated it. <laughs> and now I think she still hates it. I don't hate it, so we're gonna debate that in the future. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's my that's my answer. But what what about you? What's what are your favorite films? Why? Um, I think you know one of my favorite films. How about I test you? What are one of my favorite films, Sheldon? You should know this. No, 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 you, no, no, no. You answer. <laughs> You answer. You have so many. Well, let me. It's you love Hitchcock. Uh huh. Uh huh. Which were one? you gonna say a Hitchcock film? Uh, no. But you weren't. But no. What is the other film that I love more than anything? You love. You love. Um. <laughs> I know all your films, but you just tell the people. Come <laughs> okay, on. Okay, my favorite them. film of all time is The Umbrella of Sherbert. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why didn't you say it? <laughs> Oh, The Umbrellas of Sharpreg is my favorite film. I think deep down inside, besides all my desires to kill off all my characters in the most brutal way possible, I'm a deep romantic. So it's like very musically inspired. Um, I love tragedy, but I also love beauty. I love hope. Right. Um, so I'm just a big mess inside. You love French? I do. There's some, and there definitely is a past life here that has to do with French culture. There's like, it's hard to sort of ignore that. I'm pulled to it so strongly going to Paris, going mm -hmm. to the catacombs. There's like a strange connection, um, mm -hmm, a strange mm -hmm. curiosity and and just, I'm, I'm very drawn to it, um, French mm -hmm. culture. So that was, and also the music, Michelle Legrand did an amazing job with the score and um, with the soundtrack of the film. So it was, it was strangely, I mean, that was the movie that made me want to take a film studies major as mm -hmm. well. Cause originally I was gonna be a social major and uh, just become a social worker. <laughs> Can you imagine? Roxy, as, yeah, I could. you could be anything. Aw, thank you, Sheldy. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, okay, so we're in a pandemic. What do you miss most during this time of quarantine and pandemic? And like, how do you practice self-care? What do you do? Mm, I, um, I live alone. So I think that's the hardest thing is physical touch is inaccessible. Um, and uh, that really takes a toll on your mental health. And I, mm -hmm. that's what I miss the most. I miss being able to hug people. Like I know people say that all the time, but that is seriously the thing I miss the most, more than anything. Like mm -hmm. more than parties, more than drinking, more than whatever is just being able to enjoy a hug with someone I love. 
Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm is I really miss my parents. I really miss going back to Taiwan. It's been over a year since I've seen them and that's very hard for me. Mm -hmm. And I think self-care has taken <clears throat> many different forms this year. Like I always thought that self-care was bubble baths and face masks and like eating well. Right. And, um, but for me, now I realize it's also cleaning up after yourself, you know, doing your laundry in a consistent time, you know, making sure your space is good, you know, for mm -hmm. your, um, just for your well-being, your overall well-being, how much air you get, you know, how much mm -hmm, sunlight mm -hmm. you get. Like these are such small things that we used to look over and take for granted every single day. And I mm -hmm. had no idea how much all of these small experiences add up um, into your whole. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. never forget, like, like I, I would never take another coffee shop experience where I just people watch and sit mm. for granted ever again. right yeah what about you um i mean a lot of the same things right? i haven't seen my family in over a year or two uh, so it's it's you know, i miss that i miss traveling for um all the projects and i just miss working i haven't worked that much during the quarantine so i miss the the energy of being on set and the rhythm that you get in with everybody around you the collaboration i haven't had that um but I'm lucky enough at least to be sharing an apartment here in Brooklyn with my my girlfriend now wife. Yeah. We got we got married. We had a wedding plan, you know, in March 2020, and then the pandemic happened. So we were like pushing and pushing, and then we just ended up getting married in our building lobby in June of 2020. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, yes, I got married. Yeah, yeah. So it's all good. Um, she's jealous. But, she wanted yeah, to. I know. Marry. She's barking. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I think that has been, I mean, that she's helped me with my self-care. You know, if I'm too stressed, she'll tell me, hey, breathe, hey, do take some take some time to have some deep breaths, just calm down. Or like if I'm always worried about, oh, I need to watch this movie, this movie, this movie, to like, you know, to to reference this, or she'll be like, hey, just, you know, chill out. <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's been you know, I feel lucky to have her here you know, yeah. during quarantine. We are moving back to LA, but I'm glad we're doing it together, not just, you know, not just me. Yeah, no, but. I think it's important to be appreciative of what you have. Like, if there's anything that this past year has taught us, it's that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, Shelby, how do you stay connected to your artist community? Um, well, I guess... VC organized this, so I have to say connected with you. So it's thanks, VC, for that. <laughs> <Asshole. laughs> um, no, but other than this, I, I have a um, like a pretty close knit community. Um, you know, from my my um, fellow filmmakers at NYU. So we've stayed connected globally too, which is pretty great. You know, through a WhatsApp chat group and stuff like that. Um, but it's mostly just just being present. You know, with keep track of what people are doing and always just checking in every now and then. It's hard to keep track with you know to keep in touch with so many people but you know some close collaborators i think it's important to, to really just stay connected you know keep up with what vc is doing what the asian american community is doing what you are doing um and yeah just just being active because I, I know some people who really remove themselves during the quarantine you know they they just shut off a lot of social media and because it's overwhelming for them mm -hmm. but i think for me it, it's I, I, i'm thankful that it's there because i'm able to to be here, to be connected. Right. What about you? Um, <clears throat> I got lucky because like Two Horny Goats is like a really great way for me to connect to my community. And Priscilla is so good at engagement. Is that is that the podcast that that's the podcast that I'm not I'm not part oh of? Oh my that's god, get over yourself! <laughs> you can't be a horny goat. You're not a Capricorn. <laughs> you're, that's you're right. Scary. But you, you are like another... two horny goats and a sheep. Wait, you're a ram i guess ram. you're like a close sibling which is pretty much what you are to us yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. i think it's pretty close um and and priscilla I, I think you know it's important to be close with people who sort of balance out your strengths and weaknesses so i'm not that great at can you know i'm not good at social media i sometimes just post but i am very bad with engagement prisca is super good at that and i am a person that's you know, unless someone reaches out to me, I only contact a few of my closest friends on a day, daily, maybe even a weekly basis. And for mm -hmm. the most of the time, I just um, keep myself to a pretty general routine 
uh, keep myself pretty isolated and keep myself busy. I think that's something that I'm pretty good at. Um, mm -hmm. So I check in once in a while, but it is, it is exhausting. Like it's, it's exhausting to feel that you always have to be tapped in. Like it yeah. almost feels like the internet is like connected to our brain and connected to our spinal cord. And it could feel lethargic. It could feel very draining sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> regardless of how you want to spin it, we do feel disconnected no matter how hard we try during this mm -hmm. time. Like it's just right. not the same. So for me, I think balance is essential. So um, I check in once in a while, but for me, I think focusing on my work and focusing on my growth and during this mm -hmm. time is still probably the best thing for me, at least, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to stay sane. Nice, nice. So, okay, if you were to describe me in one word, what would you use? Shelby. <laughs> That's true, I guess. You do call me that. <laughs> I oh, there's so many words to describe you. I, I that's such like, like how would you describe me in one word? Probably eccentric. That's probably the word you'd use. Um, no, I think I would use. Um, oh shoot, let me think. That's I know too. I mean, there's so many words really, for you because I know you so well. It's like I know so many parts of you, and I know like, how do you encapsulate a friendship like this in one I think, word? I think you would be larger than life with, you know, larger hyphen than, yeah, so it's one word, it counts as one word, right? If, if, if you type in Microsoft Word, larger than life with, and you connect it, that's one word. So that's what Rocks uh, Larger than life. Um, wow, that's really hard to follow up. I guess, I guess. I mean, you don't want me to say obnoxious because you're not obnoxious anymore. I right? am obnoxious though. Okay, I'm cool. Not, that's... Not... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would no, say. You're not. Honestly, I would say that you're inspirational, at least to me, like you're very inspirational. Like I think you're always pushing me and everyone around you to be their best. Even the directors you work with, like you know when we're settling and that is, you know, people on set, they just wanna go home. You know what I mean? After a long mm -hmm. day, um, mm -hmm. people forget the reason why we're doing something. You forget why we're here. And right. um, if there's anything, even the shoot in Utah was fucking brutal. Like. I learned how to be grateful for that too, because I would mm -hmm. much rather go through that than have nothing and then to mm -hmm. be locked up. Like that's how you know you truly love something, you right. know? So I would say like, I think inspirational is the wrong word, but it's like, you always push us to be better. And that's something Oh, I'm look at you, that's for. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> but to, I think you're larger than life because, um, like I was saying earlier, no matter what you're doing, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a, a dinner, whether it's a hangout in your in your old Mentone Culver City apartment, oh. you know, whether it's a shoot in Utah, whether it's a shoot in Taiwan, you're always more than what you're supposed, you know, like people think, oh, here's she's the director, but you're not just the director. You're much like everyone, it's so infectious, your energy and your personality and your 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 willingness to give, your willingness to listen. So I think that's why no matter what you're doing, you're, you're always bigger than what someone would think you are. And that, I mean that <laughs> in the best way. Best oh way my possible, God, this know? is on record. So I could just like listen to this oh, and no. replay it forever. <laughs> and I could use it as blackmail oh, no. in the future. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Anything were to happen, where you're just ego. Like, keep that ego. Ego, ego is just like constantly rising. But yeah. Sean, like, honestly, I'm just so thankful to VC and thankful for you, and I'm so happy that yeah. we had Thanks, this opportunity VC. to like get to know each other all over again. I know, right? It's, it's been so romantic. 10 years, right? Over ten years. Over ten, over years. 10 years. We've been friends for over ten years now. Yeah. yeah. I don't think VC knew that we knew each other this well. When they Not like this. this. Now we need to have a ten year friend anniversary. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, lots okay. of bolo balls, like bolo a bolo ball cake. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with bolo balls. I know you are. Okay, okay. Well, anyway. anyway, well, just gonna end this here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, bolo balls end it. Ho well, hopefully, thank you, thank Hopefully you, you like this, uh, take care. Yeah, Roxy. Okay, bye Roxy, <laughs> bye Roxy. Bye. Goodbye. Don't play your violin. No.